Hello friends, welcome to the second video lecture of structural mechanics. In this lecture, we are going to discuss this problem that you can see on your screen. So why this problem to start with? Well, the best way to learn a foreign language is from birth, but then it is no longer a foreign language. The next best way to learn a new language is to use it. Speak it, read it, listen to it, watch it on television, or if you're really proficient, make a telephone call. So too, in the mechanics of solid, we insist you to begin to use the language. Because what happens, sometimes an engineer will be asked a question and a response will be expected like in five minutes. You will not have time to go to the library, access a database, or check, check the textbook. So intuition and problem-solving approach must be developed from beginning. So let's start our journey with the problem statement. From the image, it looks like a funny figure, but it will serve as a path-breaking problem as we proceed through the presentation. So don't run away and cope up with me. One thing for sure, if you are able to bear with me till last, you will develop a new skill of handling problem. This exercise is intended to introduce the essential concepts and principles of the engineering mechanics of solid. It is meant as an overview, so do not be disturbed by the variety of concepts or the range of vocabulary. We will try to grasp the essential workings of the device and begin to see the relevance of the concepts and principles of engineering mechanics to an understanding of how it functions and how it might be made to work better. So this is a problem of two frame mounted on roller joint and attached to springs at end. So our aim is to determine the behavior of the structure as the applied load increases from zero to any finite value. So let's just pause for a minute and try to understand what this problem speaks. Yeah. So this will be the deflected position. Right. So what will happen now when you will apply the load at point B? Well, this, the, our frame will deflect like this. So what you can infer from the, what you can infer from the problem? Well, as the load is applied, it will cause the frame to deflect. And it is very easy for you to tell all the physical changes because as you have, as you have already visualized the problem in the beginning. Right, and due to this deflection, the rollers will move in the horizontal direction. Right, when the load will when the load will increase here, our rollers will move in the this direction. This roller will move in this direction, and this roller will move like this. Right. Then, as as you can see, that the length of these two frames is equal. It is same. And also the boundary conditions for both the frame is for both the linkages is same. So what you can say that this problem is a mirror image about AA. So we can say that the problem is symmetric, right? Due to this movement, there will be compression in the springs. So let me summarize all the points. The vertical displacement is related to U1 and U2. Well, vertical displacement here is this. There is the vertical displacement and this U1 and U2 is horizontal displacement, but they are related, right? Then the second point is the structure is symmetric about A, right? Yeah, because the length is same here, the boundary conditions are same, same load is applied, so the structure is symmetric about A. So both delta and U are measured with respect to undeformed configuration. Oh, I'm sorry for the spelling mistake. It's an undeformed configuration. Then as P increases, that means as you are increasing the load, which it will cause to increase the U. Delta will increase and simultaneously U will increase. An increase in U causes compression in springs. So I think I have explained the problem in detail right now. And I think now we should start solving our problem using some equations. Okay. Yeah. Proceeding further, so what we'll do first is, first we'll isolate the point P. And as we know from the concept of principal equilibrium that we have already covered in our first lecture, that the resultant force needs to be zero at any isolated point for equi equilibrium, right? So let me mention here the node B. Um, well, this is the 
this is not the here. Okay. This. This is not there. Yeah. Also, the angle made by the linkage is theta from the horizontal. So let's first do an horizontal force balance and see what symmetry does to the force balance. Mm. Yeah. So when you will equate the when you will do the horizontal force balance, what you will get is F1 cos theta is equals to F2 cos theta, right? Here, let me show you the thing. This is F1, this is F2. So F1 cos theta acting in this direction and F2 cos theta acting in this direction. So you can say for equilibrium, F1 cos theta should equals to F2 cos theta. By canceling cos theta from the both sides, what you will get is F1 is equals to F2, right? So this is the conclusion that the, because of symmetry, F1 is equals to F2. Now, doing the same force balance for the vertical direction, what we'll get is P is equals to F plus F sine theta plus F sine theta. How you, you're getting this is, right? P. Where force P is acting, this is the force P, which is acting in downward direction. And if we resolve this force F1, it will get resolved in this and then vertically in this direction. Similarly, this force F2 is horizontally here and vertically here. So for equilibrium, this force, this upward force should equal the downward force. So F sine theta plus F sine theta is equals to P. And already we know that F, F1 is equals to F2. Though that's why I'm not writing F1 sine theta plus F2 sine theta. So directly you can say that P is equals to 2F sine theta. Okay. So this, these are the two findings that we got from node B. Now we'll take another node that is node D. Now doing the static equilibrium at node D, what will uh, what we'll get from when we'll do the force balance at node D? We are taking this section here at node D. Let me show you the force balance. <coughs> well, we will get these equations. Now how we will get these equations? I'll take you. Yeah, when you build up, when you will do for node D, which is here right now, see this this F2 you are going to resolve. Okay, so this F2 first horizontal force will be in this direction, and vertical force will be in this downward direction. Right. Similarly, this joint this joint is going to provide you one reaction R. So that reaction will act upward. Our next video lecture is on these constraints only. So you'll get a very good, very clear idea of after listening to the third lecture. But till now, just know that this reaction will act upward. Now, when our this when our spring will compress to this side, okay, so our force will generate in this way. So this will be like our Fs. So this is our Fs that I can say, um, yes. So now if you will do the force balance, what you will get is this F2 cos F2 or F, F cos theta is equals to Fs. Obviously, they should cancel each other for the equilibrium. They should be equal and opposite. They are equal and opposite. So writing in the another manner, we are getting is F cos theta minus Fs is equals to 0. Similarly, if you will take the horizontal horizon, uh, vertical forces, it will be F sin theta, this F sin theta and the acting which is acting in downward direction is equals to r or again in writing in the another form we will get r minus f sin theta is equals to zero see we are not taking force p here because force p is acting only on node b right right now here what we are considering is forces that are acting on node d okay so i think it's clear now if it, is, if it is not clear pause the video resolve the forces and see if you're getting the same equations you take any direction you take any positive or negative you will end up with these equations only okay so this is all about the force balance at no, at node b and d but now due to the force deflection equation you know force de force uh, force deflection equation that F is equals to K into U, where F is the force, K is the spring constant, and U is the deflection. This equation you might, might have come across in your engineering till now. 
So now what we are going to do is we have concluded each and everything. We have derived everything. Now we have to use these things. Okay, whatever equations we have, we have just derived. Now we have to use these equations to get one result. Okay. So from the problem statement only that we have assumed that the links are continuous, right? Links are continuous. So which means that they, they are not going to elongate or they are not going to compress. It means length of that link is constant, right? And this also means that the angle, see, initially uh, it was making theta naught and after the deflection is it is making angle theta. So it means that they are independent of each other because length, anyways, length is, is going to be same, okay? So if I'm, if, if I want to know like what is the deflection, horizontal deflection, U. So how you can refer that, how you can find the deflection? From the geometry itself, see. This anyways, this is the same. This is going to be the same. This is the initial position, okay? And this one is the final after deflection. So U1 is this. So if you subtract this length from this, you'll get your U. So first angle is theta naught. So this length will be L into cos theta and then other will be L cos theta naught. So if you subtract these two lengths, you will get your deflection. That means horizontal deflection U. So similarly, you can use the same geometry. So you can use the same trigonometry method for finding your, for finding this horizontal deflection, right? So you will be, L, we have taken L common. So L cos theta minus cos theta naught and delta is equals to L sine theta naught minus sine theta. Clear? Yeah. Hmm. So now we have to use these equations. Now we are done with the force balance. Now we need to get these things arranged. So the first equation that was obtained, you from the node B was P is equals to 2F into sine, sine theta, right? And the other equation was F into cos theta minus Fs is equals to zero. Now, if I'm going to take first equation, okay, okay just let, 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 let's take this only. What you'll get from here is F is equals to P by two sine theta. And from this, you'll get is Fs is equals to F cos theta, right? Here, yeah. So this is the equation Fs, this equation you are getting from here, okay, Fs is equals to F cos theta and from this you are extracting F that F is equals to P by 2, okay, it's divided by sine theta, okay. So now just simply substitute this, this, uh, this F here, okay, so Fs is equals to P by 2 into cos theta by sine theta. Right now, you have we have done this equation fs is equals to k into u. So, if you have the value of fs, you have k, you can find the value of u. So, u will be p by 2k into cos theta into sine theta. Right, but from the trigonometry, what you have derived u is l cos theta minus cos theta naught. Similarly, delta is equals to l sine theta naught minus l sine theta. So simply using these geometrical relations, what you have finally got is these equations, right? Clear? So using all the equations and simply by substituting the values and using one equation into another, we are ended up with these two equations. So what you can say by looking at the equations? Hmm? Because these are the final ones that we have got. So it's definitely that means that they are telling you something equation speaks right so think <laughs> so if you closely look at the equations they are in parametric form remember if you remember like for a circle you know that x is equals to r cos theta and y is equals to r sin theta these are the the simple parametric circle equations that you know so it simply means that if if you're going to plot these equations, what you'll get is a variation of result, how your parameters are varying, okay? 
So if we plot the both equations and see the variation of results, one can also eliminate the theta to find the analytical expression, but this is something you need to find, right? Now we are plotting and yeah, this is the graph that you will get when you will plot the result. Now can you relate? So here what, what is our x and the y axis is whatever it's of constants p is equal to 2 k into l and delta by l. So you can see that how it is varying and what are the results that we have got right. So range is between theta naught to theta and theta to theta naught. Yeah even if you take any theta naught you will get your result. So Thank you for your attention. I hope your concepts are clear now and uh, if not, then we'll cover some, some more problems in our subsequent lectures. So subscribe my channel and, and keep exploring. Thank you.